welcome dear learners today we are going to discuss about solid waste pollution and its management so before going into the problems that are created by the solid waste and its management let us discuss what is the solid waste solid waste uh, means any garbage or refuse or sludge from the wastewater treatment plant or water supply treatment plant or air pollution control facility and um, these also uh, con uh, consist of uh, discarded material resulting from various industries commercial uh, settlements mining agriculture operations uh, and from community activities and it encompasses everything that we leave behind that is some kind of waste so basically solid waste is an unwanted material produced during households or commercial or industrial activities and uh, it is important to note that the definition of solid waste is not limited to wastes that are physically solid it may be liquid also it may be so semi-solid or it may be gases kind of thing so the solid waste uh, can cause severe environmental problems both in developed and developing countries uh, the problems uh, that uh, are related with the solid waste basically which are the reason of solid waste pollution uh, they are for example population explosion urbanization industrialization rapid growth in technology and uh, in india on an average the production of the solid waste is around 0.8 to 1 kg per person per day uh, basically in metropolitan cities and in the smaller towns it is around 0.4 kgs uh, per person and another problem with the solid waste is uh, the poorly collected and inadequate transport and disposable uh, disposal facilities particularly in india <clears throat> so these were some facts about the solid waste so now we go to the classification of the solid waste so uh, basically classification or in other sense we can call it the sources of the solid waste for example from the domestic waste it consists of uh, paper plastic leather wrappers polythenes what kind of things we use uh, like the packing materials we buy something uh, chips uh, wrappers so every kind of thing that we use at the home that uh, creates uh, that uh, I mean uh, that uh, leads to the solid waste uh, accumulation and that at the end can lead to the solid waste pollution so industrial waste consists of paper and pulp industries oil refineries chemical industries and metal smelters and Commercially, we have paper fabrics, plastic, packaging material, basically commercial like hotels or restaurants. And mining waste is also there. When we go for the mining, there is also waste. Radioactive waste like nuclear explosion, nuclear testing, use of radioactive substances in medical and scientific research. Agriculture wastes like farm uh, wastes like crop residues are there, livestock residues are there, uh, bagasse from the sugar cane, for example. So these are all the agriculture solid wastes. And besides that, there we have hospital wastes also. Needles are there, syringes, uh, blades, bandage, tissues, and electronic waste that is uh, very uh, common nowadays. Uh, which includes uh, the various kinds of the electronic equipments uh, like computers refrigerators mobiles that leads to the uh, electronic waste uh, generation so about 
e-waste that we also call electronic waste is uh, basically a collective technology for the entire stream of electronic products such as televisions refrigerators computers mobile phones which have uh, become absolute obsolete and uh, e-waste con uh, contains lead mercury arsenic cadmium polyvinyl chloride and other toxic and hazardous substances which poses serious problems uh, for the environment and human health. So e-waste comes from the uh, any source. Maybe it is the individual households, government, public, uh, or private sector, computer retailers, computer manufacturers, or secondary market or old computers, secondary market of old computers. So these are the various kinds of the sources and the classification of the solid wastes. So now, what are the effects of solid waste? First is solid waste leads to the disease. First, it leads to a disease uh, organism like it makes the breeding place of the uh, for the pests, for the uh, for the pests like mosquitoes and uh, many other uh, rodents that uh, flies. Uh, that free freely and increase the population in the solid waste uh, like we are seeing on the roads uh, we have the large uh, piles of solid waste and dogs are breeding in their uh, in that piles of the solid waste and second effect is uh, it runs off with the rainwater and mixes with nearby water bodies and this is a very serious kind of pollution and it leads to the water pollution also. Nowadays, we are seeing the plastic uh, like or polythenes that are we using on a daily basis uh, in day-to-day -day life. Uh, they find their way into the receiving water bodies through the drains or through the non-point source of uh, runoff, like uh, from the agriculture fields. It finds its way to the receiving water, water bodies. So, these uh, solid waste can uh, create the water pollution also. And if we go for the burning of these solid waste, mainly it is a plastic, it creates the problem of the air pollution. So that is the another problem. Neither it should be disposed of into the water, neither it should be burned. That creates water and air pollution. And sometime when uh, our solid waste consists of radioactive substances, that can cause many other diseases. For example, from the nuclear waste or nuclear power plants, the nuclear waste is generated. If it is not safely disposed of, like it is disposed under the, uh, I mean, into the landfills or into the oceans, so if it's if it finds its way into the community or into the people, uh, like uh, for, which can find its way into the food chain then it can cause serious problems in the human beings. Sometimes radioactive materials are also used in the laboratories or in the research labs. So they can also find their way into the uh, human uh, food chain. Another reason is solid waste uh, reduce aesthetic value of the land. So this is uh, the very uh, common nowadays, uh, particularly at the picnic spots uh, where we go for the excursion and uh, Wherever human reaches, it uh, leads its uh, footprints in the form of the plastic or solid waste. So it reduces the beauty of the place where we uh, find the solid waste. Another is uh, the non-biodegradable solid waste like polythene plastic that release toxic gases when burn, and they also can. What I was saying earlier, they can cause the uh, air pollution. Sometimes direct exposure to many other solid waste they can cause uh, skin infections and uh, sometimes uh, they can block our drains also. This is uh, particularly uh, common in the rainy season when our drains get blocked because of the solid waste. So these were the various effect of the solid waste. So now the treatment how can we manage the solid waste? The solid waste is harmful 
to the natural environment and poses serious threats to the material remaining at a particular area for a longer period of time unless it is removed or burned or destroyed. So there are various ways how can we manage. So there is an urgent need to adopt proper tec techniques for the solid waste management. Uh, which will help in minimizing the adverse effect of solid waste. So solid waste management involves many uh, steps like the proper collection, segregation process, uh, processing and uh, disposal into the economical way. So the first point is here when we can see in the flow chart where the waste is generated, whether it is at the domestic level, industrial, commercial, whatever level it is generated, then how can we handle the waste at the source level? So for example, source level, we have to segregate biodegradable, degradable, and uh, certain kind of uh, the in different forms uh, in waste. And then this uh, waste is collected and transported. Then we have a uh, different kind of uh, the activities uh, that we do with the solid waste like we do the metal recovery and we go for the recycling that is particularly done in the form of paper uh, we recycle it another is the biological treatment we go for the composting that we uh, discuss in detail then or energy recovery for insertion or uh, we can use for the waste to energy plants so another one is the land fling overall the material that is generated from here ashes or we can go directly from the collection transport to landfills but this land fling should be done in that uh, very technical way uh, it should not be done in the random so the collection the large number of dustbins should be provided on in the streets and along the roads which must be clear at least uh, once or twice in a day and not should be uh, for the weeks uh, sometime they are not cleared so enable proper collection of solid waste as per their categories for example biodegradable degradable and then this is a very common problem collection and segregation is very common problem in solid waste management and then transport facility uh, like from urban areas to the dumping grounds uh, tractors trucks should be provided and uh, um, basically they should not be overloaded so that they spill or the or spread the solid waste they carry on the roads so collection at the household or the commercial level should go for the we should separately collect the recyclable materials like canes milk bags or disposable cups that can be recycled and then Inert debris. Inert debris means uh, that are not recyclable, like the diapers, sanitary pads, napkins. These should be collected separately and uh, it should be uh, collected into the polythenes that are uh, that should be kept separate from other kind of material. Then organic or kitchen waste that are biodegradable that we can go for the composting at home and hazardous waste is like paints, batteries, uh, cleaning agents, they should be collected separately. So if this segregation is done uh, like this on depending upon the different material, then definitely our solid waste management will uh, improve. <clears throat> so uh, when we go for the disposal of the solid waste, so first is open dumping. So open dumping uh, is uh, the refuse is dump, uh, decomposed in the open dumps like the big pits are collected and they are sometimes uh, not covered uh, properly and this leads to the solid and uh, land soil and land pollution so uh, open dumping is not advisable in any way then sometimes we go for the landfills that waste is covered with a thick layer of soil it reduces the basically the rodents or the flies or they carry the, I mean, for example, which carry the the infection from this dumping area to the humans. But still, this type of the waste disposal method creates the pollution in the groundwater. And uh, when we use that groundwater, it can mix uh, 
the agricultural land unfit because when we dispose of the material in the landfill, it creates leachates and that percolates into the groundwater. Then ocean dumping is another uh, way industrial effluents con uh, containing poisonous chemicals are dumped in the coastal and estuarine area. But this affects the coastal or marine ecosystems. This is also not advisable. Um, but this is a very common problem in terms of plastic. We find plastic in the oceans and uh, many kinds of the aquatic birds and animals. They are, um, I mean, consuming these kind of plastic and uh, like they are consuming the fish. So they are not digestible and at the end they die. Then another one is inseration, that is the combustible waste is burned at high temperatures such as combustible substance reduced to the ash. Basically, this is done in the waste energy plant where the waste is uh, burned at high temperature. And fly ash, that the ash which uh, comes out as a residue is used for the construction or uh, in, uh, in the construction industry or breed uh, as a landfills. And also use for soil amendments. Sometimes it contains some nutrients. By this volume, waste is reduced to 75 to 95% because the waste, when the waste is burned, it releases the energy and only ash is uh, left. So this is very good uh, thing uh, in metropolitan cities like New Delhi, Mumbai, and uh, other cities which have high volume of waste generation, they can go for the insulation and also production of the electricity. Composting for the biochemical, uh, biodegradable uh, substances, they can use as a uh, production of farmyard manures, they can uh, improve the fertility of the soil. Then at the source, we should reduce, for example, uh, overconsumption and wastage, we should go for five hours that we will be discussing at the end of this lecture. As I was saying, the insulation, this, for example, solid waste goes to the uh, furnace and uh, it reduces the volume of, it burns basically the, uh, the solid waste and uh, produce the heat and this heat is basically used uh, for the generation of the electricity and then uh, this uh, fly ash they are uh, uh, treated uh, for the various uh, i mean the gases or the hazardous substances and later on the gas that is releasing from the steak is also uh, i mean filtered gas it is not on the poisonous gas doesn't come out so a separate facility is built for this job it is not done in the residential area and done at some four other uh, areas where you uh, basically uh, they can find the garbage easily accessible and also uh, it is far away from the residential areas. The composting which I was discussing, it is a method of uh, using biodegradable waste where the quality manure is formed decomposing the solid waste like the or kitchen waste comes out we can uh, decompose it in the soil and after the composting form uh, it is rich in nitrogen carbon and uh, phosphorus and sanitary landfills where uh, the uh, solid waste is uh, dumped into the pits but it's covered with the soil so there is no chance for the rodents or the flies to feed or breed in this kind of but there is a problem this uh, should be done properly. This uh, bl uh, black lining is the concrete uh, lining. So it, there is no chance that the leachate will go to the aquifers, for example, to the groundwater. But we can draw the leachates out and we can treat these leachates, basically the liquids that are uh, generated from the solid waste. So this, uh, the problem of groundwater pollution from the landfills can be reduced by this kind of uh, the technique or we can uh, keep the monitoring wells where we can draw the water uh, at regular intervals for the treating not uh, for the treating but for the analysis whether the, it contains any harmful uh, substances because of landfills or not and the pyrolysis is also another technique is basically decomposing organic material by heat but in absence of the oxygen 
so the biomass is dried then it is grinding is done and then pyrolysis is heated in absence of oxygen and the char is or is produced and uh, the, we can produce the bio oil that is also used for the uh, electricity generation or in various other things it is used so the gas is also released but it all happens in the absence of the oxygen insulation happens in presence of oxygen so currently uh, what is the statistics uh, for the generation of the solid waste currently as per the government estimate about 65 million tons of waste is generated annually in india and over 62 million tons are uh, of it are municipal solid wastes so municipal solid wastes are around 62 million out of 65 million of solid wastes that includes organic uh, wastes recyclable like paper plastic wood glasses and uh, only about 75 to 80 percent of municipal solid waste are collected and out of this only 22 to 8 28 percent is processed and treated so this is the there is a lot of scope in the waste solid waste treatment and uh, by 2031 municipal solid waste generation is projected to increase to 165 million tons and further up to 436 million tons by 2025 so this is the very critical uh, statistics though the quantity of this uh, waste generation is increasing waste uh, collection efficiency in india is still catch up catching it is all not only the solid waste generation is increasing but treatment facilities are also increasing it ranges from 70 to 90 percent of major metropolitan cities and it's blue uh, means for example uh, the major metropolitan cities or uh, many other cities which have uh, around 50 percent of the facility for the treating of the solid waste management so there are certain rules in Indian constitution that major solid waste contributors uh, in India are like municipal solid waste, sewage, uh, industrial, biomedical waste, e-waste, nuclear waste, agriculture waste. So there are many kind of the acts that are dealing with, uh, with such kind of uh, wastes. For example, Solid Waste Management Act 2000 uh, rules 2016, Plastic Waste Management Rule 2016, e-waste, biomedical waste, hazardous waste. So there are a number of uh, the rules and acts that are dealing with the uh, solid waste management so the problems in the management of the solid waste is basically inadequate service coverage so in non-municipal areas this problem is very common uh, where we don't find uh, the proper collection segregation and transportation and disposal of the solid waste then operational inefficiencies of services the remaining municipal solid waste is disposed deposited at dumping areas we should not go for the open dumping but most of the municipal solid waste is dumped as an open yards a limited utilization of recyclable activities we should promote the recyclable activities and uh, these activities are limited inadequate management of non-industrial hazardous wastes uh, industrial waste sometime uh, or non-industrial waste hazardous waste sometimes finds ways into the food chain because of it is inadequate management then inadequate landfill disposal these are various kinds of the problems that are facing currently in india regarding the solid waste management so the r's that are used for the solid waste management for for the first is the refuse think before you buy or you think do you need this if you don't need then don't buy bring your own bags with you uh, when you go for the shopping this is particularly good at when you go for buying the groceries so you should bring your own bags then reduce buy goods that last long buy rechargeable batteries look for goods with minimum packaging or a gift buy goods that uh, last uh, along buy rechargeable batteries like this is the same kind of uh, like to reduce recover the carbon from the grass trees prunings by the composting uh, we can recover the nutrients from such kind of the materials for, for example biodegradable materials then reuse uh, for example buy goods from the local shop 
re remake things into something new to get kids to help you to make paper uh, mashy gifts like it's very common in the Kashmir we use different kinds of uh, uh, like boxes or items from the paper and uh, we draw some painting on that uh, repair sometime uh, the item can be repaired uh, in a store of buying new one like mobile phones we can repair the old one and uh, we can reduce our I mean uh, the we can for example we can uh, say no for buying new one for example fixing the object rather than throwing away good shoes can be uh, rehealed or resold by many times over and recycle at last when we or uh, the items is basically thrown out uh, into the garbage then uh, we can go and collect it and then recycle it uh, this uh, are the uh, various arts of the solid waste i hope you all enjoy the lecture and it increases your knowledge thank you mm -hmm.